Good day everyone. For today, we will be discussing about ethics in communication. As what this slide presents to us, it will first show to us the difference between your morals and ethics. As mentioned here, your morals are personal codes, while ethics are societal, meaning to say your morals are taken into the personal side, which is why it is mentioned as the own set of rules, so that others are neither expected nor required to follow them. Simply put, it has been developed over the years through your experiences, your learning toward different aspects of your life, and at the same time, the interactions and engagements you had with other people. From those moments, you were able to develop your own set of rules, your personal standards, thus naming it as your morals. On the other hand, you have your ethics, which again, as it suggests, these are rules that are accepted and approved by society, so they're imposed upon everyone. Meaning to say, it's more of what we call as a general rule that applies to almost everyone that is involved in the process. And in the process of communication, again, everyone is involved. Thus, ethics would be very necessary for us to develop them. Which is why what I will be sharing with all of you for today's lesson will be about 10 ethics in communication. Right? It is simply to understand how we should be proper citizens and proper communicators with other people. The first ethic, or the first part in the 10 ethics in communication would be your mutuality. It says to pay attention to the needs of others as well as yours. We understand that sometimes there are others that would have different needs when it comes to communication, such as understanding how they would really speak because they might come from a different cultural background or as well as even yours, right? So, of course, when communicating, there's a need for us to express what we have and at the same time, there should be a balance when it comes to communicating. There might be moments wherein we feel that we are one-upping other people and that we're not giving them the opportunity to speak, which is why there is a need for us to maintain that balance that each person is able to communicate his or her own uh, thoughts. It's not just us. It's not just the other person. There should be a balance. That's the first one, mutuality. The second part in the ethics of communication would be your individual dignity. As much as you're communicating with one another, you also do not need to cause other person embarrassment or a loss of dignity. Come to think of it, we're always communicating with people and that we are always wanting respect. Just as our course description would always tell us, respect begets respect. And thus, in order to do that, we also need to respect the individual dignity of one another. Thus again, if we are able to communicate things which might really need some time for the person to process, such as a feedback or probably a criticism that he really needs to know or to hear or she does, again, there is a perfect time for us to do that. So thus, we do not just simply tell the person directly what we have in mind. There's a need and consideration when it comes to uh, considering your individual dignity. The third part would be your accuracy. It says here that we need to ensure that others have accurate information and tell them everything they have a right and need to know not just what is true. Now, for some reason, again, we need to understand that when we are delivering accurate information, we also need to deliver what people should really need to know. Well, sometimes other people might say that it somehow brings them the danger because of telling the truth, right? Uh, you've heard a lot of people that because they've told the truth to other people or to the public, uh, they've put their lives in danger or they've endangered their own lives. But as a matter of fact, isn't it that truth will also set us free, right? So again, when we are telling the truth and we know that it can really cause some problems as regards with other people, as they say, timing is our friend when delivering accurate information, right? And the same goes also with the fourth part, which is your access to information. It is said, 
that never bolster the impact of your communication by preventing people from communicating with one another or by hindering access to the supporting information. Again, if we are able to provide them already the access to these information, then let's do so, right? So there's no need for us to block the manner or wherein we are able to gather information. Again, every person deserves to know an information that they really need to, most especially if it really affects their lives, right? Uh, it's very awkward that we are not having access to information that we're in the next day we might endanger our lives, right? So we don't we don't want that, and thus again we proceed with providing the best access to these information. Okay, now the fifth one would be your accountability. So once you've delivered an information to other people, we now need to be responsible and accountable for the consequences of these communication that we did or basically the relationships that we are building with other people now for some occasions we really cannot avoid to somehow provide inaccurate information right so simply uh, these might be based also from the hereabouts that we have or what we can also call as rumors right uh, in the Filipino context would be the chica right and because of that because of this widespread of information which is not fully validated it sometimes causes conflict with other people and thus we are now hold accountable to it. And thus when we say accountability, we should also have the means and the ability to ask for an apology, all right, to apologize to the people that you might have created a mistake with. And again, you know that it's your mistake, you hold on to it and you do something about it, right? That's about accountability. The next one would be number six, would be your audience. So as audience or receiver of information, you also have ethical responsibilities. It is said that a good rule is that the 200% rule where both the sender and the receiver have full or 100% responsibility to ensure that the message is understood and that ethics are followed. All right? So again, as we are talking with other people as well, we know for a fact that because they're listening, they're already absorbing all of the information that they can have based on what you're saying. And because of that, again, you also need to consider the audience or the listeners of what you will be saying. All right? Just as what we're doing right now, we are trying to consider how am I able to deliver all of these information to you step by step piece by piece so that we won't have information overload, all right? Because then again, I believe that all people will have really different ways to express information and it's either they can one-up it or level it up or sometimes just tone it down so that things will be easier, right? So other people might say that a person can really sound very smart, but at the same time, another person can also say, it's good, but wouldn't understand the entire story. So it's better to use simple words so that other, a lot of people or everyone can understand than use very complicated words which might not really result to full understanding with other people, right? So that's consideration of your audience. Now the seventh would be your relative truth. As you can read with your eyes here, Right? It says here, allow others to respectfully disagree or see your opinion or conclusion differently. You will really have different opinions with other people. You will have different perspectives, different views. But as much as we want our opinion to be the only opinion, that will not happen at all. Because again, we believe in different truths. And the best way for us to say is that it needs respect. All right? We've been hearing a lot of these, most especially in elections, especially when there is a debate of different views and beliefs. But at the end of the day, you can only do less but as again to respect their opinion. And what does it really entail? So when we're talking about respecting another opinion, it's not just we're tolerating or just leaving it be, but rather we respect as we try to understand where they are coming from. And again, we also need to accept the fact that change does not really happen immediately the way we want it, right? We just need to allow them 
to absorb what they have, to feel what they have, and at the end of the day, it's still their decision on what they should have, right? So again, even if we push a person to do this and do that, but the person is not really willing according to what we want, then again, there is that saying, we just need to respect what the person has, all right? Next, number eight would be your ends versus means. Understand that the end goal of your communication and the means of getting to that end are both ethical, although no rule can be applied without preservation to any situation. Again, there is that debate wherein they say that the end result would mean that there is a good result or a good uh, way to do it, but it doesn't end it that way. So make sure as a communicator and as a person that the way you achieve your end goal would be ethical as a way you would also have it with your means. Okay, so an ethical means, an ethical end, although even if it's complicated and hard at times, trying is already better than not doing it at all, right? Next would be your ninth, the use of power. In situations where you have more power than others, you also have the responsibility for the outcome, right? And because of this, again, you also need to understand that when you are delivering speeches to other people, you also have the power to control what they will be getting. So this is why, again, as we are communicating, we should be aware of how we deliver it and those people who will be listening to it and, of course, the information that you'll be providing. All right? Everyone has power. We just need to use it rightly. And the last one would be rights versus responsibilities. Again, everyone, not everything you have a right to do is ethical. It doesn't mean that a lot of people are doing it would automatically mean that it's already right. There are times where, and again, we also need to check with our responsibilities that even if it is legal, it is allowed in the society, doesn't mean that you also need to do it the way others would also do it, right? And thus, once again, we now have to understand that these rights, okay, that you have would always have a balance with the responsibilities. Again, I would say not everything you have a right to do is ethical. So once again, those are the 10 ethics in communication that I'd like you all to remember. And again, please take note that as we absorb the 10 ethics in communication, we also need to apply it in real life. That is all and may you all have a wonderful day.